Howdy, everybody. Eric out here with Tilson Homes. We are live. It is Tuesday. It's two o'clock. We are live on Facebook, live on YouTube, joined by the one and only Mrs. Dawn Dancer. Hello, Dawn. Hey, Eric. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We actually are live today. We are. We may have popped in yesterday. We were trying a science experiment because, see, that's what we, we, we do. We, we, we try to make it better always. And so mm -hmm. what were we doing yesterday, Dawn? What did we try out? So yesterday we tried restreaming some of the past episodes um, just to see, you know, if people were interested in that, if they needed a little break or give them the opportunity to discover Tilson Live for the first time. I mean, it worked for The Office. It worked for I Love Lucy. There's absolutely no reason that we can't jump on the bandwagon. Friends, hello, say by the bell. I mean, there's all kinds of, of things in syndication. Um, we have yet to collect our first check from the actual show, but... No true, reason to true, yeah. it in syndication. But anyway, so we are live today, though, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. We're here to answer all of your questions regarding building a home on your land, particularly in rural Texas, or where we do 91% of our business. Drop us where you are watching from, where you're building, what part of the process that you're in. Put it in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Again, this is Eric and Don coming at you live. It is Tuesday, 2 o'clock. Looking forward to jumping in on a very special home tour we have today, Don. What are we going to be yes. looking at? So today we're going to be looking at a custom driftwood that was built in Navarro County. So beautiful lakefront property that just a gorgeous, gorgeous home. The driftwood's one of one of the perennial favorites. Everybody loves that plan. So just exciting sure. to see some of the changes that the customers made. So, yeah, we, uh, you know, and, and I know we say Navarro County and that's, that's really where it is. But particularly where we're seeing a lot of activity is that Richland Chambers Reservoir. So Absolutely, uh, yeah. Lake Richland Chambers, which is kind of just outside of Corsicana, up and down 287. Beautiful lakefront property, um, easily commutable to the DFW Metroplex now that it's kind of ballooned out. So we're seeing a significant amount of, uh, of interest and activity in there. A lot of lakefront subdivisions going in. Uh, I think this was an Arrowhead subdivision there, but we're yeah. seeing, you know, there's Apache Shores, there's Admiral Shore. There seems like a new, a new subdivision going in every week. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've been talking that it's almost like that area is becoming almost like the next hill country um, yeah. kind of area because we're seeing lots of people from different parts of the state relocating there, lots of second homes, um, you know, lots of lots of just migration happening. Yeah, it's actually yeah. relatively affordable lakefront property, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, drop in the comments, guys, where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you're in. We're going to take you through this home tour, obviously. We are here as we are every single week to answer all of your questions regarding building a home on your land, design questions, site preparation questions, financing questions, um, anything that has to, something you're being told, something you're confused about, something you're worried about. Um, there's, there's all kinds of things we can help you with. There are things we cannot help you with, but there are some things that we can absolutely help you with. Um, so we'd love to hear from you guys. Obviously, jump in and tell, tell us if you watched yesterday at all, if you, if you got anything out of yeah. you know, the the Tilson live in syndication. Yeah, I know awesome. we confused a lot of our own employees. I know that was pretty funny. We did. I lots of lots of people who are like, "Wait, we're closed today. Like, what's going on? Why are Don and Eric live?" Lots of panicking, going, "Am I supposed, was to, be I supposed to be at work?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, Don, we got anybody joining us yet? Let's go see. We do. We have another Don um, coming in. Um, and then we've got a gather and share over from YouTube. Angela Jefferson says she actually did watch a couple of the rescreens yesterday. Very cool. Very cool. Um, we have David who does all of our wonderful videography, not these, but all the other things, like the ones that actually look good. David's the one that does those. And he says that lake is just amazing. He's had the opportunity no to go out there a lot for us. No doubt. And other Dawn is out of Kaufman County, um, oh, nice. a realtor. I've had clients looking all over west of Fort Worth into Southwest, spending a lot of time out that way. Yeah. 
podcast. Very nice. Very yeah. And we have Martina. Hello from Colleen. Trenching today for water and power lines. Awesome. Okay. Um, and Julie says she watched a few bits and pieces yesterday. Thought it was a great idea. We get to meet our builder and Jody tomorrow in Bowie. But uh, we went out there yesterday and we have forms. Uh, I get excited to get to start shopping for chicken coops. Yay. Oh, That's Julie, crazy. there are. Maybe maybe Will from Klondike can jump in and give a little help because I started looking for chicken coop plans. My daughter drew up a set of chicken coop plans. It, it's going to easily oh. come one of our houses with like, we're gonna have to For those of you who don't know that. Taylor, I'm betting this is like the nicest chicken coop. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the uh, exuberance, but but we are we need to start small. She like, got plans. They don't get a better, nicer space than I do. So we got to start small. <laughs> Taylor doesn't think small. No, she does not. Uh, we got the Richters knee deep near water in Texas. Uh, liked seeing how others do their build yesterday. Awesome. Sweet. I don't think you guys yeah. enjoyed them. And we've got Donna living in Georgetown, but we'll be building in Marble Falls. Hopefully nice. we meet with y'all in the fall to get started. Awesome. Right. She's waiting on cooler weather. I don't blame her. Yeah. <laughs> we got Madonna. Hi from Corsicana. Hope to start our home in the shores next week. Awesome. There we go. Another one of those subdivisions there on the lake. Yeah. Yep, we got Jennifer watching for Myco signed her contract Sunday for San Jacinto. Awesome. Oh, congratulations, Jennifer. Thanks for trusting. We got Sam and Samika. Hi, guys. Building in Tampico in Refurio County. Awesome. Nice. We have Julieta from Matagorda County. Uh, Julie's saying that Will is definitely going to be her go-to yeah. for, for advice. Subject matter expert, good, for sure. Good plan. Absolutely. And then we've got Rob and Anna just investigating and planning for the future. Well, welcome. You've right. come to the right place. Yeah, Rob, you're on the up there on the on the northern edge. Uh, and I think Anna's still Collin County, but you're right on the edge of, of Collin and Grayson County. So a lot of activity pushing up that way as well. It's still very commutable. So anyway, so Dawn, let's start out with what we're talking about here. The driftwood. Everybody knows the driftwood, bottom yes. home in Georgetown. So let's get into this yes. thing. Guys, keep dropping your questions and comments into the chat. We will answer all of them. So uh, let us know where you are in the process. If you've got questions about what's going on, um, holler at us and we will answer all your questions. Yeah. Um, so the driftwood, like you mentioned, is one of the models in our Georgetown office. And it is one of the ones that was pre-designed with an attached garage. So it actually has a two and a half car um, attached garage. And it's kind of, it was designed really with that garage placement for a, like a narrower lot, somewhere where you needed to be able to access the garage from the front. Um, and it's just, it's a beautiful plan. It's got a lot of features. It's a very popular back porch, just lots of things that everybody really, really enjoys about the model. So I highly recommend going out and taking a look at that. But it's got the, the stone and stucco exterior, all the wood accents. It's just, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Pretty awesome. And um, so it's standard. The, the normal floor plan for the model is, for the, for the plan, is a three bedroom plus a study. So, and honestly, it's pretty easy to convert that study to a fourth bedroom. Uh, it comes with two and a half baths and that attached two and a half car garage. And it's just a little over 2,300 square feet. Um, features that people really enjoy about it are, are the family room. It's got a huge cathedral ceiling uh, that comes standard and goes out onto that back porch, which is also included at with a cathedral ceiling. Um, and it's just, you know, got an open kitchen and just, just beautiful. Just a great use. I love the way it's a, it's a split bedroom plan. So the master suite is on a completely different side from the rest of the bedrooms. Everybody has their own space and just that really nice oversized garage. You've got you know, your full two cars and then room for all of your, your toys. Your toys um, or your not so toys, your lawnmower. Uh, yeah. Toys. It's oh, still I a like toy. It. Oh, it's it is a toy. Total toy. Total toy. Um, also, 11 miles an hour is a toy. Yeah. Also, something we hear a lot about this one, the master bathroom is just yeah. great use of space and the master closet is amazing. Um, one other thing to know about this plan, if you've heard us talk about the Cypress, that is the sister plan to the Driftwood. So if you're talking about looking at a Driftwood without a garage, that is where you would want to would want to look is looking at something like the Cypress. Yeah. Um, but let's, you know, this, this customer has made a lot of changes to this plan, but I will let them kind of start talking to you about that, um, in a little bit, but just kind of an overview. This is actually few changes, um, relatively in Tilson world. This is one yeah. of the, the mildest changes I've seen recently. So we were kind of excited about that. Um, a few things that they did, uh, they did go ahead and make that two and a half gar car garage, a full three car garage. Um, and then added, did some changing in the master bathroom. So usually the master bath is going to come with linen cloth, linen pantries in it, um, cabinets. They took those out actually and created a different vanity space. They separated the sink, put in, put in knee space there and added in a medicine cabinet, which we don't see 
very often. So it's kind of nice to see that happen. Um, in the bath too, they actually turned it into a Jack and Jill uh, bath uh, there and then added a niche, a niche into the shower um, in that area. They did make some changes to the kitchen. Um, they changed the island to make it six inches longer wider this you know this way um and changed up the stone the the post on that added to the stone front and when they did that to kind of keep it from looking off center they went ahead and extended the cabinets as well so added some addition additional cabinets on the uh, cooktop wall and with doing that also pushed the pantry door um a little bit and then they also in the dining area usually on this plan there is another door from the dining area onto the back porch they decided instead they'd rather have that in their master bath so they just kind of played swapsies so the window that would have been in the master bedroom they put onto leading up you know put that in the dining area and move the door to the master bathroom so that's a real easy change for us to make um if you're interested in doing that and then, you know, just some other stuff, you know, added the rough sound wood to wrap the beam um, in the family room and added an electrical fire, electric fireplace in the family room, which looks really, really nice with some built in cabinets next to it. So very good. Yeah, space. Which is a neat addition for, you know, climate zone three. Obviously, we, we go to we go to great lengths in all the areas we build to build the houses tight, you know, for the energy mm -hmm. standards. But climate zone three, especially you're talking to spray foam, we're talking dehumidifiers. You know, and I just love how they they added the the electric fire. I'm, I'm here in Waxahachie now, and we have that fireplace here, and it just it accomplishes the look, which is really all you need at that point because the house is so tight, so energy efficient. You're gonna have a hard time like building a big roaring fire in there anymore, anyways. Leave that for your for your outdoor area, and obviously their their waterfront. So I, I can see why that, you know the door on the back, of course, mm -hmm. uh, the big beautiful patio going out on on, on lake front. So yeah. Just, Really they that. also added a lot of additional flat work after. So this will that door will make a lot more sense when you kind of see what, what mm -hmm. else they did in that space. But let's let's let them kind of introduce you to their kitchen. Let's do that. Hi everybody. Hi everybody, I'm Kelsey with Tilson Homes, and I am here with Jenny Getchell to talk about her stunning Driftwood Bee home in Navarro County. So first things first, let's talk about this gorgeous kitchen. Thank it you. looks a little bit bigger than what we're used to in the model. So kind of tell me about some changes that you made. Uh, it is a little bigger. Um, so the island is nine feet. Mm -hmm. And so being that's the case, we extended the um, cabin tree in the island uh -huh. out here closer to the pantry. Yeah, it goes right up to the door, yeah. which is really nice. Just. I mean, there's a ton of storage space in here. Yes. We've got all of this. Yeah, the co we've got the coffee bar, and I mean, it's uh, it's so fun cooking in this kitchen. Oh, I it's, can it's imagine. It's a dream kitchen because you have all kinds of counter yeah. space. There's yeah, there's so much space, and even if you have two cooks in the kitchen, you don't have to be oh, like they do on the TV we've shows had where five. you're like, back, back, back. Yeah, we have, we've had five in here, and yeah. it was not a problem. No, everybody yeah. has tons of space, and even yeah. the walkway in between the uh, island and yes. these cabinets is really spacious. Yes. Thank you. So tell me about this island. I love that you did the darker color to contrast with your lighter gray cabinets. Mm -hmm. Is this, this is not the standard island? No, it's not a standard island. It's, it's custom made mm -hmm. um, along with the post here. Mm -hmm. We did a modern post oh, instead yeah, that of looks really what nice. it came with to go with the design. And um, this and is a great space for entertaining. It is. Definitely it's, room for everybody. Cannot. You've got seating at the bar. And I really like that you have the stone on the front too to kind of bring the outside in. Yes, and the fireplace mm -hmm. matches the island yeah. and it just kind of goes together. Everything all goes together. Yeah, I love fits that. so nice. Thank and you. then over here, this this area kind of seems a little bit bigger. Yeah, so we made this uh, the dining area a little larger mm -hmm. so we could fit more people. And then we took out the wall. It was a small wall that kind of separated it and we just yeah. wanted an open floor plan. Yeah, normally this cutout is a little bit more narrow. So yes. I like that you widen that. That really makes it easy to just kind of flow yeah. through the house into the Thank living you. room. Thank you, we're really like loving it. Yes, I'd <laughs> love it too. <laughs> All right, well, let's go talk about that living room. Okay. It's very nice, beautiful, beautiful kitchen. Yeah, pretty spectacular. You don't get a lot of people who don't believe that the driftwood is quite open enough and want to open it up just a little bit more. So, but I'm, I'm glad they did. I like, I really like what they did with it. And yeah, the, the island to get bigger and the stone on it, just mm -hmm. super, super pretty. 
Yes. So this is just kind of a little bit more detail on, on that kitchen. So you can see, see the photos there. Um, and just this, you know, this is showing how they did extend all the way to that pantry wall, uh, right to the door. And then on this one, this is just kind of showing you what, what they were talking about with the, the breakfast area. So usually in this dining area, this wall actually comes out a little bit to make this a little bit more of a room. It just feels a little bit more of a room and they actually removed that jut out um, in, in their home because the island was wider. It actually would have interfered with the walkways um, there to make it. And then this is just kind of a close up on what they did on the front of that island, um, which just turned, I think turned out really nice. Um, it's nice yeah, bringing those outside it. elements in is, mm -hmm. is, a, is a big deal these days. And then, yeah, they, I, I mean, I know removing the door, I think that's, I think that's great because again, you can get to the patio. Easier. Yeah, because you have you have the door coming off of the family room anyway, yeah. so it's almost better, and that way you don't have to worry about another door kind of interfering with your your breakfast area yeah. space. So I think it was a good it was a good choice to do that. Well done. Um, let's see, we had a couple comments come in, so I'll jump over to those. Real quick. Yeah, guys, drop your questions or comments into the chat. That's what we're here to answer. We're here for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have Linda, um, who is VA from Frisco. Um, hope everyone had a wonderful fourth waiting for septic and water, hopefully soon. Still unsure about foundation costs, but hopefully news about that coming soon, building the Canyon Sea in Grayson County. Yep, for sure. Yep. And then we've got Amy who's asking, and I think Kelsey did answer, but I, I would, I'll would i address it too. Just curious oh, if you yeah, do marketing you are, analytics you with saying, all these customizations. These are magical dawn words. When you think say things like... <laughs> Marketing, marketing and I have to talk about marketing analytics. Oh, uh, like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go have a bite to eat. <laughs> y'all have a y'all have a great rest of the live. We'll see you later. So yes, Amy, we did a lot of study leading up to when we started kind of redoing um, a bunch of our plans. We did a lot of st uh, studies of what were the most common things we change. What are the most common things that everybody's kind of asking for us to do in plans? So we've incorporated all of those as pre-designed custom options um, that you can just you know plug and play. And, and put stuff in. So we do those, we track down to exactly which one is most popular on which elevation and like the drafting department gives us all kinds of numbers um, about which ones are selling, which one's selling on which plan, um, all of those. The more, you know, kind of tiny tweaks are a little bit harder for us to track. So we more, we mainly just kind of like file them away in our head. If we start to see patterns um, that we, we keep making this change, uh, we do we do track that. But yes, we're always trying to improve and, and make things better. So we love seeing, we love seeing y'all's ideas. It's also one of the reasons we started sharing them um, with you guys on these lives so that you guys can see, oh, we really can make that, you know, if there's that little thing in the plan that kind of bugs you, we really can fix that and, and make it work for you. Yes. And, and please don't ever use the phrase market analytics with Dawn again. I, I'm very impressed that we did not go completely. <laughs> no, it's what she's. she's I pulled out zero Excel sheets and that like, you should, you should be, y'all should be proud because if you knew how many Excel spreadsheets Maybe she were, could do a master class on marketing analytics. Um, it's so, so fun. I love it. Yes. Fun. It's, a little, it's, it's a little scary if you think about it too much though. Fun's a word. But. All right, uh, Linda, looking forward to Island having fireplace stone bring it all together. Yes, it's exactly what they did in this one. Uh, what is the size of the dining room? I'm trying to put it into perspective if I can accommodate an eight person table in my space as well. Well, I just checked it out real quick. Uh, it's about 12 foot two from sheetrock to sheetrock. So why? And then you're looking at about it's about 11 feet from the back wall to the island. Now, mind you, some of that has to be a little bit of a walkway, but it's about mm -hmm. it's 12 two by about 11. Uh, but also knowing us that there's no door swinging into it. You've get, really got the whole space, no door swinging in or out. Even if the door swung out, you would still need to be have a way to get to that door. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's they have 12 they two, have they have plenty of space for for eight person table. Mm -hmm. um, and you put the three kids you don't like at the bar as usual. It's, it's, <laughs> The ones you really don't like, you get outside. Yeah, they go outside, um, particularly in July and August. Yeah, and with with actually in the model, our table goes the other direction. Mm -hmm. So it's a very it's a it's a big space to begin with. Yeah. All right. And we've got um Tara hi from Kaufman building the little port, right. waiting for a drywall to start. Awesome. Very cool. So you want your floor plan to be a little less open. You want some walls. <laughs> some some walls in it, yeah. yeah. A little drafty. Um, Linda's saying, can't wait to see pantry open to utility in our player. Oh, good oh, idea. idea yeah. 
That's a good idea. Um, and Eastman's sharing, I'm in the framing stage and enjoy driving to my lot every day to see all that is happening. Thank you. I was interested in adding rock wool sound and safe bat on the interior walls. Is that something I'm allowed to subcontract? And if so, uh, at what stage would you allow it? Also, that's a really good question to ask your building superintendent. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yes. I mean, it's something that, that you probably could do. You may want to go ahead and get, get on, get on their schedule. I don't know what their schedules are like right now. If they're like anybody else, they're booked up and i think you're in the hill country as well so just multiply that times two whatever someone tells you right uh if they tell you four weeks it's probably more like eight so um ask that it, it yeah i mean what we the biggest thing about when that goes down and again your your superintendent will be the the uh final say on that but um we don't want to mess up anything they're doing and we don't want them to even inadvertently mess up anything that one of our contractors is working on so uh the disturbance of the work is a uh, is our priority when something like that is going on. Uh, I don't see why they would be, but we also don't want them holding anything up. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely call your building superintendent, tell them exactly what you want to do and maybe reach out to uh, a company or two that's doing the, the rock wool sound and safe and, and find out kind of what their timeframes are so that you can work that out with your building superintendent from a scheduling standpoint. Okay. And then we've got David checking in from our Katie office. What's up, David? Welcome. All righty. Well, let's take a look at this living room. All right. Yeah. Y'all keep putting your questions and comments into the chat. We'll answer every one of them. This fireplace is, is beautiful. Thank you. I love that it's a little bit different from what we normally see in the model because the stone only goes halfway up. Yes. Yep. Um, so we chose to have just part of it because we felt that um, the whole thing was kind of an overkill. Yeah. We want it to just be uh, a part of the house, not all of it. Yes, and I love what you did by adding these little cabinets on either side of it because it it adds even more storage space. Yes. And then I I saw that you added the floating shelves after the fact, which I think really fills in that space nicely. That yeah. was really good. Yeah, uh, Tilson left behind extra wood in, in our garage, and mm -hmm. so we just used that Might as well use and it. stained it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then so the wood stain that you have is the same throughout. It's the same here. It's the same on this gorgeous beam. Mm -hmm. That is just, it's such a warm color. I love that. Thank you. And, and then. And the ceiling fans, uh, mm -hmm. you can either have them wood grain or silver. Oh, and yeah. so you can reverse them, which is what we did. Because, oh, that's cool. Because it goes with uh, the decor. Yeah. Um, and we didn't, we wanted to uh, make it blend in and a more modern theme. Yeah, it definitely has a mm -hmm. modern farmhouse feel because mm -hmm. it's, it's, you have all the color scheme of being modern, but it's so warm still mm -hmm. that it's cozy and farmhousey and very welcoming. Thank you. So with this cathedral ceiling, it goes all the way from the front of your house to the back. Yes, and and again the same wood. Yes, uh, which we love, and uh, we're loving all the windows. Oh my gosh, um, these you, windows are amazing, if, and they just come standard with this plan, which is incredible. Uh, it is. Right when you walk in, you get to see the lake, mm -hmm. and that's the very first thing you notice, so we're glad about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you don't even really need to have lights in here at all. It's so bright. Right, yeah. <laughs> all that natural light coming in. Well, shall we check out the master bedroom next? Sure. Okay. All righty. Yeah, the family room with the driftwood is for sure the uh the, the focal point um mm -hmm. you're into that house it's it's hard to not be drawn all the way through to the gigantic back wall of windows but yeah tell us about the fireplace yeah so um this is one of the electric fireplaces um and they're they're fun you can change the color of the flames you've got lots of like like all of our fireplaces there's lots of options so you can choose mm -hmm. whether you're gonna have the wood in there you can choose if you're gonna have stones you can pick colors and then this one you know comes with the handy dandy remote so you can change colors and you can turn on light without heat um so you can actually have kind of that ambiance of a fire without it actually producing any heat so when it's you know july um, you could still kind of kind of have that look if you wanted it um but yeah it just looks really nice i love the way they did the built-ins um yeah, on really the side cool. of this it's good good smart use of the space um and just i i kind of agree with her it's a very different look when you don't take the stone all the way to the ceiling you know that way it doesn't you know, usually when you do that that dumb i mean that is the focal point in the room and this really allows you to kind of draw your eye more to the outside in that lake view that they were yeah, and that's yeah, and when you do do the stone all the way up like that, like it's it's that way forever, right? Like mm -hmm. 
That's yeah. it's, it's very not I say that it's very difficult and expensive to pull stone off of the <laughs> sheetrock of a house. Uh, whereas this is a nice clean look. You can change the look if you want the TV there or not. And yeah, like I said, if you've got a waterfront view, that's where you want the focal point. That's that's yeah. a great, great point there. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's go on and see the master suite in this home. So let me get right. that queued up for everybody. All right. Let's talk about this bedroom. This is nice. Mm, so big. It's so big. We love it. It's, it's so spacious. spacious. We could add extra furniture. Another it, wonderful. fireplace. Another perhaps. fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> So tell me about this door that you added in here. Okay, so this is the greatest thing. Um, the door was originally uh, from the outside going into the dining room. Right, and, and going just out to the patio. Yeah, and so we said, can we move the door into the master bedroom? Mm -hmm. And it didn't cost any money, so yeah. we were really excited. Yeah, just deleting that door and yeah. adding it back here. And it works out great because you extended that patio to wrap all the way around to the garage. So mm -hmm. it just, it's your, it's like having your own little patio right off the master bedroom. Yes. That's so nice. Yes. So in here, I love how much light is coming in. And mm -hmm. you've got this giant window above the bed here. Yeah, at night, it's beautiful. You can see the moon. Yeah. And um, during the day, it lets all this extra light in and it really makes a difference yeah. in the whole room. Yeah, it really so does. So I love that window. I love the amount of light coming in. And then over here, mm -hmm. we have a smaller closet. Yes, yeah, and it's not so small. Um, it, it's a walk-in closet. And uh, this is one of two closets. Oh, wow. It happens yeah, this to is be not my husband's closet. closet. That um, is awesome. So yeah, he just loves it. So you have two closets then? Yes, and I actually have my own closet. I'm that so excited. That is so nice. You're like, this is yours. You have your very own walk-in. Yes. But I have mine and it's bigger. <laughs> right. It's better. <laughs> All right, well, let's go check out your master bath then. Okay. All right, this is gorgeous. Wow. I just, I love a good master bathroom because it's where you spend so much time in the morning and at night, just winding down, waking up, you know, it's good space. It's very large. Yes, it is. Yes. And then in here, tell me a little bit about what you changed about this bathroom. Um, so, uh, we made two separate sinks mm -hmm. with a vanity uh, down below. And um, we optioned not to do the mirrors. Right. We put the money, we put that money into something else. Mm -hmm. And so we did our custom lighting. So normally you just have the two cabinets on either side of this. Yes. And then just uh -huh. the two sinks across with no vanity. That's right. That looks yes. really nice. And then Thank over you. here, this is something that we don't typically see. Oh, we, that was a nice surprise. So That's you a, have a medicine a cabinet. medicine cabinet. That is cool. That is such a smart thing to add in. Yes, I love that. Yes, we really like it. And then this huge shower. Oh my gosh. Just as it comes. Yes. I love that. And you get to, you get to uh, look at the beautiful mm -hmm. view. And then in the shower, uh, you didn't really change anything, but you did add the two niches. niches right there. Yeah, that's it. Just the niches. Yeah. Um, Great for extra storage space. Mm -hmm. For decor items. Decor, for yes. Me. Yeah. Shower decor. Yeah. And then over here, and just the standard this is tub, standard, yeah. Which is just gigantic also. It's huge. There's just so much room in here. I love that. This is one of my favorite bathrooms in all the plans. The Driftwood bathroom is just amazing. Yes. All right, well, let's check out Jenny's closet. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is room. this is a big closet. It's very big. It uh, goes to the right, it yeah. goes to the left. Wow. Um, you have so much room in here, and it's so nice that you each have your own closet, so you don't have to worry about sharing space or saying, this is my half, this is your half, or you have all the lower that's right. shelves. It's just, it's just nice that it all works out like that. Yes, yeah, that's great. Yeah, well, let's go check out the other half of your house. Okay. Okay. So don't you love that she's like, oh, here's like a little closet, and it's right. it's huge. Right. It's, it's one of the yeah, one of the few one of the few plans where the the his of the his and hers is actually like it's as large as some of our combined his and hers. Right. So, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of store. The master suite of the Driftwood was just, I mean, our our design and drafting team knocked it out of the park with that. Um, mm -hmm. Spectacular use of the space. A lot of storage. Big bathroom. Uh, really, really glamorous. So. Pretty, pretty yes. impressive. Very nice. Yeah, and I like that the tall, the high window over the bed that brings in the light, but still there's some privacy there. Um, 
And yeah, and you can see where they added, they swapped out that that window for the door that would have been would have been in the dining area. Um, but yeah, just a nice big large suite. Um, nice, nice size bedroom. And then this is the that bathroom again, just so you can kind of kind of see what, what they did there. Um, just a nice again, a nice thing. It's it's nice as it comes, um, which I actually hold on, I actually have that uh, pulled up on my other screen. You guys want to see that. So this is the the standard, um, you know, the, the kind of common driftwood layout. This is what we were talking about with the the two um, cabinets Laundry that are there. That are, cabinets, yeah. Laundry. Yes. Um, so that that's how it usually is. You can kind of see how they changed that, how they changed it out um, to make it to make it their way. So I kind of like the way they did, you know, these raised cabinets on each side, dropped it, um, and have the the new space uh, in there, and then did their own their own mirrors rather than the the large one all the way across the space. So I just love this bathroom. It's one of my favorites. Um, as Robert yeah, really saying, opened it up as well, taking those cabinets It's out. opulent. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, a it word. Feels, that's a great word. Was, I know. Make that the word of the week. <laughs> We're going to put that in this like opulent. Lavish. Yeah. Lavish. Yes. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, it does. It does. It kind of opens and brightens up that space, um, particularly if you're doing a darker cabinet in there. It just makes it, makes it look a little bit more open. Um, but let's go on and um, look at the rest of the house. Yep. So I noticed that you have the same flooring throughout the whole house. Yes, and closets and everything. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a really nice color. I think that you did a really great job of picking that out because it kind of ties in everything. It ties in the cabinet color, the stain, the walls. Yes. And yeah. it, it, I mean, it kind of has all those tones in it. Right, which right. is really nice. It, it uh, was a good pick. Yes, we're it really was. happy with. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this entry space. This is just okay. So beautiful. it was important to have a grand entry. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a water feature on the wall. So the electrician added the uh, plug-in. Yeah. Uh, we also added side lights and um, a custom door. Yes, uh, that we, door is beautiful. Thank you. You see it from the street, mm -hmm. and it's it's a conversation piece right yes, away. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I love just the Texas star in the middle with the iron. It's so pretty. Thank you. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about this space. Uh, this space originally was supposed to be closed off, mm -hmm. and uh, an office entry uh, around the corner. Mm -hmm. But we chose to have a door here so that the guests could use the half bath. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. And so you have your half bath over here mm -hmm. as well as the utility and then access to the garage. Right. Well, let's go check out this guest bedroom, shall okay. we? Okay. All right. Okay, this room is huge. I don't oh. think I ever realized how big it was when you tour through the model and you see it with a desk. This is a with, massive room. With all this furniture in here, and it, it's still so spacious. Yeah, That's and this furniture like is not it. small. It's so large. But it still feels so big. I mean, you've got two side tables, a bed, a dresser, mm -hmm. a trunk, a TV. You can fit <laughs> anything in here. I never imagined that it would be so spacious with this large furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to do anything prior to picking out this room to make sure that everything would fit or were you just hoping for the best? No, I kind of laid it out, but, yeah. I, but I couldn't imagine it to be this spacious still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it's a yeah. really awesome space. Let's go check out the other two bedrooms. Okay. All right, this is a nice space that you got in here. Yeah, we, uh, uh, it's a great room because uh, this is our music room, yeah. our game room, because it's such a large closet, extended closet. Yep. Um, Tons of room to store all the games. Also, our office. Yeah, and, I mean, it's definitely a multi purpose room. Yes, and really actually, nice. it's an extra room for guests because we have a, a bed that uh, we can use yeah. in this room also yeah. for more people. That is great. And then in here, we've just got the Jack and Jill bathroom, which is a really cool feature that you added. So this amount of storage in here is really nice. Oh my gosh, and we're using it. Um, and it has the hampers. Oh uh, yeah. I think that's such a great addition to these cabinets. Because yeah, it's it makes nice it and easy. wide mm -hmm. and everything's big. Yep, it really is. They say everything's bigger than Texas. Well, this room really shows it. <laughs> they were right. So you've got the little shower niche in here just for extra storage or decor. Yeah. So you've got your plants in there. And then there's, I mean, the amount of storage in one 
bathroom is just endless. Yes, that all, all the guests comment. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really You never nice. have to worry about where you're gonna put stuff, that's for sure. Right. And then you have your final guest room in here. Yes, the, fi the favorite guest room that everybody fights over. Everybody says, this is my room whenever I come. Yeah, I mean, just look at um, the view. It's got the best view of the whole house. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's just perfect. Yeah, that's a great space. All right, so let's go finally check out that view and that back patio. Okay. Okay. Very, very nice. Yeah, it is lost on you when you walk in because again, the model set up, the doors open all the time. It's a study, um, mm -hmm. and it, you know, truly, you just add a door. Like it's yes, there's nothing to making that a fourth bedroom. It's already got a closet in there, like you see on the back wall there. And yeah, that was something I was going to share. So, in when you come into the model, that study is actually open um, like this. But what what they did is they actually went with our our bedroom four option, um, which is what fills that wall in. And so then what she did was instead of having the door on this side, they put it on this side so that that, because when you do the um, Jack and Jill bath, um, you end up losing the hallway access to this bathroom. So they just moved this um, bedroom door to the other side so that you would have easy access yeah. to, to that powder room. So it's kind of neat to see how people take our different, our different options and, and change them up. But you have, you know, four, I mean, sorry, three additional very nice sized rooms. Um, as you can see, she had very large, large furniture pieces um, in there that just don't really, you know, it didn't feel like the rooms were small. Like it's, you Not still got a no. ton of space in there. Um, yeah, she has, a, she has a great command for space. It's it's what she's done yeah. with it. It's really, really pretty. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I've, I've never, this is the first one I've actually seen as a converted to a fourth bedroom on the front. And I just, I'm with them, like yeah. the room, enormous. Yes. And then that Jack and Jill bath um, in that hallway just comes out so nice. You do, you have so much space um, in that area. And I like how it's, if this is sibling sharing a bathroom, there's a nice divider right there with that huge, huge cabinet that like very clear, my side, your side. Um, yeah. Going on it is there. something nice though. Like when you do go to a, as, as a guest in a house, like you're always kind of, well, where are the towels? Where are the washcloths? Mm -hmm. Where's, you know, the toilet paper and having it all, Hey, it's all right here. There's plenty of it. Top shelves, you know, there's five towels there, washcloth, having it all there, done, good to go. And when you're done for the weekend, throw it in the hamper and you're out of here. That's the beauty of right. lakefront living at its best. It's like mostly, the so, most important part of that is that the guests actually leave. That's the most important part of the guest <laughs> go. go. I'll make it as easy as possible for you. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the rest of this home. All right, before we go check out the back, I really want to check out this front exterior. Because sure. this is the first thing that you see when you get here. And yes. it is just beautiful. Thank you. So what are your, some of your favorite things about this exterior? Uh, that would probably be the wood trim mm -hmm. uh, and the accents of the shutters. Yeah, the wood color is so nice. It's the same as on the inside. Yes, in the columns, it, it matches the inside. You kind of get the spectacular outside, and then you walk in and go, wow, yeah, it continues. Do. This entire entryway is probably the talk of the neighborhood. It pretty much is. Everybody wants to come over and see the inside, so we'll host our third housewarming party yeah. next month oh. so they can see it. <laughs> I love it. Pretty soon you'll have the fourth and the fifth, and then they'll oh. all just be welcome over anytime yeah. they want. All right, well, let's go check out that back patio. Okay. All right, so I do want to check out the back patio, but I want to show everybody how you get there okay. through the garage. So we come through your nice utility space where you're going to put your new fridge. Yeah. And then you come through this awesome garage, which is just, it's so spacious. When you see it as an actual garage, you can just tell how big it is. Yes, definitely. And the extra storage yeah. for our kayaks and, yes. and workshops coming. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're we Well, and then keeping it. your kayaks in here, you don't have to worry about them flowing away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And then right through here, we have your walkway, right? Yep. All right. So we've got the start of your awesome walkway going all the way around. And that is just... That's such a good idea to add this walkway so that you're not just walking out into nothing. Oh, we use it often. Yeah. Yes. So did you have all of this planned out when you were designing your house? Mm-hmm. 
and the curvy walkway to match the curve down yes. to the lake. Yes. That's really nice. And every, uh, everything has curves in it. Mm hmm And so this back patio is so big. It is. <laughs> this it's is great an awesome for entertaining. Ext extension. And then you enter the master bedroom from here. Yeah. That is really nice. So this ceiling is so high. That's awesome. And this is just the extension from the rest of your house. Yes, and this comes with the house. This, yeah. uh, we just added the you know, extra concrete around the house, but yeah. this all patio, very large. Yeah, this is awesome. And I love the cedar truss that you have here. That is oh, so pretty oh, and it's just you. such a statement piece. And it matches the inside, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of inside, we should go back in there because it's a little toasty rusty out here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me over and showing me all around your awesome house. Oh, it's our pleasure. This has been so much fun. So as we wrap up a little bit, I want you to tell me maybe like three of your favorite things about your house. Storage. The uh, <laughs> amount of storage is oh, incredible. Yeah. Yes. Um, everything, uh, the open floor plan. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's just a tall ceilings. Oh my gosh, the ceiling height is amazing in this house. Yes. And you have never ending storage. Right. Those two things. Party house. Oh yeah, Yeah. party house. Yeah. Gonna have all the neighbors, all the friends over, all the family members. This right? is just the perfect house for entertaining. Yes, it is. Well, I just wanna thank you again for having me over and being so welcoming and hospitable. And then I wanna thank all of you for joining us for another episode of Tilson Home Tours, and we hope to someday soon make you part of the Tilson family. It's just so nice. I just love it. This is one of my favorite houses that we have. Um, yeah, totally designed for, for outdoor living. Mm -hmm. just, you can tell they've put a lot of thought into the idea of lakefront living. Um, which is which is really really good. I love the way they use the space. Brilliant. Yeah. So we've got um, Linda sharing that she actually picked out the same front door uh, for her house. Just goes cool. looks gives that grand look uh, for a Texas home. So yeah, we we love those front doors. They're great. Um, and we've got Carolyn sharing that she loves this version of the exterior. Great selections. The driftwood is her favorite of our plans, but she's not biased. Carolyn is closest to our driftwood off. Oh, yeah, she's she, she spent a minute or two in the, little, in the driftwood. She's she a little biased. She might be a little biased. But yeah, um, it's great. Just a great, great home. Um, and I do want to say, everybody, we Will from Claudeck has has checked in. So I don't. I was getting a little nervous about him. So. I know. I'm about to send out yeah, well check on Will. Well, yeah, we were about to well check on Will. Um, so we, glad, we, to, glad to see you. Gonna, glad to see you there. Yeah, we're gonna have, to have to answer questions about chicken coops, and I was getting, I was starting to sweat under my collar. Yeah, Will, we had questions about chicken coops earlier. So um, I'm pretty good at skating with questions I don't know the answer to, but those were gonna get, those are gonna get pretty heated pretty quick. <laughs> Be made. They were. But yeah, I just love the the front on this plan is just so, so beautiful. Um, you've got all the nice stone with the stucco um, and all the wood accents um, just really, really just make this home stand out. Um, and again, those lake lots are typically narrower in nature, right? I mean, the, mm -hmm. the developer, you know, lakefront property is, is at a premium, right? I mean, there's only so much of it. There's only so much land, period. And then there's only so much lakefront land. And so you'll find that inherently they make those lots narrower so you can fit more of them um, and, and get a little bit more money when you're, cause it costs, it's expensive to develop property. Yeah. So, yeah. They tend to be, be narrow and deep. Exactly. Um, so the can... idea of being able to, you know, maximize that space with a plan like the driftwood with that J swing garage um, and still, I mean, it has plenty of space. It, it appeared they didn't, they mm -hmm. were not lacking for space at all. So, yeah. Nice, but yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And then there's that that ever so popular back porch, which we this ca calling back to the market analytics. This was one of our most popular options, so we have pretty much figured out how to put it on every single home that we have. So, um, and just figuring out all the different ways because everybody just loves that tall cathedral ceiling rear porch with the cedar trusses. And they just look just yeah. amazing. Th just such you, a statement piece. Those of you tuning in late, this is the back of the home. Like yes. This is, this is not the front of the house. It's that beautiful where you could mm -hmm. easily mistake this for the front of the house. And by the way, we have built it that way um, where that's the front of the house. But having that, I don't know how long that walkway, I could guess to pull the stake out and see, it's long. 
It's a long. It's, yes, way. you could you could see in the video it was very it was meandering. There's a reason they curved it. Otherwise, you it would just. You know. There is a small part of me that kind of wish David would have stepped off into the lake. I think that would have been a funny oh. blooper reel. Not that I want to threaten blooper reels because heaven knows he has thousands on me. But David has way too much equipment on for that to happen, Eric. Like, that would have been a life That would have been a very David. expensive blooper reel. To put a life jacket on him. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I like the I like the little subtle subtle video showing the the lake. It's a very calm inlet, very just a really peaceful place. Um, yeah. and I appreciate them sharing it with us too. That's really cool. Yes, absolutely. So, yes. folks, put your questions and comments in. This will kind of be we're we're winding down um, this particular uh, live. So, if you got any questions, comments um, about what's going on, what to expect, that's what we're here for. Don's going to throw a, a couple of these up here and. Yeah, David, David shared that that back patio and lakefront land is his favorite that he's seen. Uh, such an awesome place to hang out. Yeah. Um, and Linda says that Will was, was probably feeding the chickens. There you um, go. Will, Will agrees. Uh, busy, busy day. Who has questions on farm stuff? They can message me if they want. Uh, we processed 15 meat chickens over the weekend. He had an appointment today. Okay. Oh, we'll allow it. I thought we Next were going to get to a point. Email us for but, excused okay. absence, Will. We, we'll work this out. We'll work this out. <laughs> we'll get it. Uh, Linda saying she did an extended patio as well. Nice. Um, David said it was so hot he actually thought about jumping into <laughs> the lake. <laughs> and then we have a question. Um, at what stage does Tilson perform the blower door test and is there a minimum value that we target? There actually, here's a funny, there's actually a maximum value. But yeah, the mm -hmm. answer is yes, we do perform it at, towards the very, very end. I mean, it's, I've seen us do it. In fact, on the model home in, in Brian, we're doing the canyon. I was there for that one. And it was like after the carpet was in. So, I mean, it's truly very, very yeah, close to the end. It's one of the last steps. Yep, yep. But it gives us, an, I mean, we still have enough time to, to remedy anything if it doesn't pass. So what we're really shooting for is a maximum air changes per hour. Uh, mm -hmm. So depending on where you're building, so in climate zone two, you're allowed a maximum of five air changes per hour. And in climate zone three, uh, you're allowed three air changes per hour, maximum, maximum. So it's testing leakage. So what they're basically doing is they, you, there's a video on this, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. They take the front door off, basically. They put a, a like a seal on the front door, a big red envelope, and a, it's got a fan on it. And then they tape off all the various uh, air registers and return airs, all that kind of stuff. And they flip that fan on and start basically sucking air, blowing air out of the house. And they... And it will measure how many cubic feet per minute based on the cubic volume of the home and then how many how much leakage there is and it's a maximum so again five in climate zone two three in climate zone three it, uh, total air changes per hour that the house is allowed to do if it somehow fails we, they can actually go find out where it is failing sometimes it's at the top plates cathedral ceilings sometimes if they're not sealed up just right and and it's it's pretty easy to to bring up to where it needs to be so great mm -hmm. question but very very close to the to the end uh, Linda's asking if there's a site that tells you what zone you're in. Um, so Dawn. Dawn's the <laughs> yeah, we have we have a Dawn. I mean, there it, you can you can go try to go through government sites and figure it out. But um, honestly, the easiest way, Linda, if you're already under contract with us, did did your home include include spray foam insulation or not? That's kind of how you can tell um, with us. But if you want to drop which county which county you're building in, I can tell you which zone you're in. And then we got another question on that. If we have an air change for our value of three in zone two, should we consider getting a dehumidifier? Um, I, that's, it's probably not necessary. Um, you know, it's going to depend on a comfort level. Um, so it's it, you don't have to have it, but that's, you know, what I can't dictate is what you are comfortable with. So obviously, you know, 72 degrees at, at 62% humidity feels very different than 72 at 32% humidity, right? So, um, but in any, in any case, we're keeping the humidity levels in these houses well below 60% humidity. Uh, mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, under 50% humidity. So even in climate zone two. Um, so it's not something that, you know, you start getting into the, into the one, because in climate zone three, where we're using spray foam, we're hitting air changes per hour of sometimes like 1.8, 1 1.9. That's where Linda is. She's yeah, in yeah. yeah, you are definitely climate zone three. You are... Mm -hmm. You are Southern Oklahoma. No, you're North Texas, but you are the last county in Texas. Like it's you and then the Red River. Um, so, I, you know, until you start getting into below two and a half, below two air changes per hour, 
I don't, I don't think it's necessary from a performance standpoint, but what I can't dictate again is, is what you might think about as sort of from a comfort standpoint, but Mm -hmm. we haven't had um, a lot of people having issues or complaining about that. And when they're in the, in the threes in climate zone two. Yeah. Linda says she can see Oklahoma. Yes. She's up there. Yes, you can. Too close. <laughs> uh, we got Kathy sharing beautiful home and design. We too are in the process of building a driftwood, extended our patio too, but straight out. Hope to be in the house in August. Awesome. Oh, cool. All right. Very nice. And um, we have Marcus Sharon spoke to Matt today and begin the process of my future build. So excited. That's awesome. Thanks awesome. for talking to us. Thanks for telling us. And that is all the questions I see, folks. All right. So, uh, Jenny, first of all, thank you for sharing your home with us, letting us in there. Kelsey, thanks for making the trip and doing that, and also for monitoring the chat, as you always do. Yes. Um, so, appreciate that. David, great job on the video, as always. Don, thanks for putting this together. Um, and, and by the way, it doesn't have to end here. Where else could people, if they have questions for some reason after this, where could they find out about us? Uh, you can find us everywhere. So um, we are at Tilson Homes on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, all of these lives stay stay on our channel, so you can come back and watch later if you, if you joined us in process. We have a wonderful website um, which has all of the information on there, including a million ways to contact our great team of new home specialists. So you can call them. They can set you up with an appointment. Um, you can check everything out or you can go to one of our 12 um, design centers in person and tour our models. We do recommend you make an appointment first. So call that new home specialist team um, just so we can make sure that there's someone who has time to chat with you. Um, but yeah, you you kind of have to hide from us to not find us. Right, right. Yeah, we so, don't hide good. We don't hide. Yeah, good. We're, we're very, we're very bad at hiding. So we lost hide and seek. So we we'll uh, I think there's a question here about foundations if we want to. Oh, do we? Tara, Tara. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Tara's asking, uh, should we put drip lines around our foundation? It was poured in January. Okay. So certainly it's dry right now, right? We all, we all get it. Mm-hmm. We're in Texas. It, I don't, it, I, I was able to, I was shredding this weekend on my place, Batwing. And, and I think I found places that haven't seen a tractor since Noah and the flood. Like it's that dry <laughs> um, here. And, and so it's certainly something to think about. We, you you want even water distribution if you can get it, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, we actually have some some videos on on putting that kind of. Uh, Christy and uh, Jason did an awesome job on some of those maintenance videos. If you're still under construction, um, what I don't want to do is have them get all all messed up. Um, right. Still, your foundation is still pretty pretty new, but yeah, for those of you who you know, if you walk out and and you can see you know a gap between like the foundation and the, and the dirt, that means that, so obviously you have lack of moisture, the, the dirt's going to shrink, right? It's like a, you're going to see cracks develop and every soil type is different. But if you go outside and you see like significant separation between the soil and the foundation, a soaker hose is not a bad idea. Um, there is a prescribed amount to kind of do you, cause you can overdo it just like anything mm-hmm. else, right? You can overdo celebrations. You could overdo <laughs> soaking your foundation. It, it all can be overdone. Um, Except horsepower in a car cannot be overdone. It's not <laughs> or having p- enough power tools also cannot be overdone. But okay. foundation watering can, in fact, be overdone. And so you want to be sure you do it right. Um, reach out to our warranty department if you've got questions about that. We'll be glad mm-hmm. for our customer care division to get that. But but truly, you know, it's not a bad idea to put in. And the way I've seen them done best is on a timer. You know, so they make the little timers at your local hardware store, McCoy's, for instance, um, that you can hook onto your to a hose bib to your water spigot. You know, and it'll run maybe 30 minutes a day, every other day, something like that, and and, and do that. And just kind of s- slow adjustments are what's important. You know, it didn't get dried out overnight. You don't want it to get soaked back overnight. Like mm-hmm. foundations are meant to deal with different climate types and, and drought and ex- excess rain. But what they're not really designed to do is do it overnight. So, right. You know, minor adjustments are our best. Uh, so do it for a little bit. Keep an eye on it. Watch it. Do it for a little bit. Keep an eye on it. Watch it and and go from there. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're thinking about it because that, that mm-hmm. homeowner maintenance is a big, big part of that of that warranty. So yeah. All right. Uh, we got Linda saying fun hour. Thanks again. Oh, thanks for watching. Um, Will saying y'all a blessed day and week. Thank you, Will. You too. And uh, we got Sam and Sneaky giving a shout out to Danny at the Angleton office. She has been amazing. Awesome. Thank you thanks. for sharing that. Um, and then we've got Linda. Don't say that about power tools. My husband might be listening. <laughs> Look, my my wife might have as many or more power tools than than I have. Okay, that's fair. 
and That's and fair. get tired of her kind of stealing my but batteries is a big issue. I should have bought if I had to do it over again, we would do different brands of our power tools because mysteriously and mm. magically, all of my 18 volt batteries migrate into her oh, area country. and her projects, and I'm magically left with none. So or only the ones that are dead. So yeah, we we that's only, okay. the, only the non-charged ones. Exactly. Yeah, those are the ones I'm left with. Yeah. So anyway, thank you all for watching. We're grateful for each and every one of you. Um, thank you for those who are thinking about doing this. Obviously, like Don mm -hmm. said, reach out to us. We're here to help you. We want you to make a great informed decision. We genuinely believe that educated customers are the happiest customers. So we're glad you're here and um, we'll come at you later. And we hope to soon make you part of the Tilson family. We'll see you all later. Bye, everybody.